Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me for today's at home Pilates for runners workout. In today's routine, our aim is to strengthen our deep core muscles that support movement. So when running over time, certain areas of the body can break down. So we want to specifically target different muscle groups. I recommend doing this workout a couple of times a week alongside your running training to rehabilitate weak areas of the body, to build that deep core strength and to prevent future injuries. So I am going to be using a resistance band for one of the exercises. It happens to be the first exercise. This is just a simple loop band. You can also use a flat resistance band. If you don't have a band, you can do this entire workout without any equipment. So with that in mind, let's get down onto our mats. We're going to start off by sitting up nice and tall. So I'm just gonna press my hands into the back of my thighs so that we're stacking each individual vertebra, one on top of the other with the chin parallel with the floor. I'm going to take my band and I'm gonna place it around the bottom of my foot. If you don't have a band, you're just gonna stretch your leg out long like so. So from here, we're gonna get into some plantar flexion. I'm gonna pull the toes back toward my shin and then point the foot forward. So we're flexing and pointing, flexing and pointing. So as you do so, I want you to really focus on the alignment of your foot. Make sure that your toes aren't turning in or out to the side. And if they are, and you're using a resistance band, you might wanna work through these without a band and just focus on good form and alignment. Good, so we're warming up the ankle here and starting to engage those calf muscles. Good, really pointing and flexing purposefully. Nice work, keep that spine nice and tall. We've got five. Four, pull the toes back toward the shin each time. And last one, nicely done. Now let's switch sides. Band comes around the left foot, left leg extends. We're sitting up nice and tall, pointing and flexing. Really focusing on that alignment of the foot. Good, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Nice work. If your band moves, you can just make a little adjustment. Keep moving. Good. We've got five, four, really flexing those calf muscles. And last one, nicely done. I'm gonna place the band off to the side. I'm not gonna need it anymore. We're now gonna move into our bridge work. So use your hands to help you lower down to the mat and we're gonna set ourselves up. So we want our legs hip distance apart here. So the knees, hips, and ankles are in alignment. There should be a little bit of space between your low back and the mat because the spine is in neutral. When we bridge, we want to ensure that we're tilting the pelvis back to begin with. So flattening the low back to the mat so your hand can't fit under there. And once you've found that flat back position, we're gonna slowly roll up. So peeling the low back up off the mat, peeling the mid back up off the mat, and lifting up into bridge. Make some adjustments from bridge. So you wanna make sure that your heels are below your knees. Now, you wanna keep that tuck of the tailbone and push the hips up without overarching the spine. So you don't wanna overextend the spine here. From here, we're gonna lower. Just hover the bum off the mat and then lift again, keeping that tuck in the tailbone. Lower and lift. The backs of the arms are pressing into the mat here for support on either side of the body. And if in bridge you notice that you're starting to lose that tuck, just lower down, reset the pelvis by tilting it back tucking the tailbone, and then carry on with your lifting and lowering. Now, as you get comfortable with that pelvic position, I want you to really focus on starting to switch on the back body. So engaging those glutes, gently squeezing them as you lift, 
driving up through the heels. Good, as we strengthen the glutes. <sighs> Inhale to lower, exhale to lift. Really important to strengthen those glutes, their source of power and movement and strong glutes also support the hips and the pelvis. Good, we've got two. <sighs> and last one, push up and lower down. Now we're gonna get into some calf raises here. So again, we're tilting the pelvis back, setting that pelvis, lifting up, and then you might need to adjust your footing slightly. You, we want the balls of our feet to be below our knees. From here, keeping a nice stable trunk, we're gonna lift the right heel and lower, lift the left heel and lower, alternating sides. So slowly lower the heel down to the mat. Don't just sort of let it thump down. Moving with control, switching on those calf muscles. Abs are engaged. We're keeping that tuck in the tailbone. Good. Nice work. Lifting and lowering. Lifting and lowering. Keeping those hips elevated, but not overarching the back. Keep it up. Breathing, core is engaged. It will help with that stability. We've got three and two and final one. Lower the heel and lower yourself down to the mat. We're gonna come up again. This time we're gonna do double heel lifts. If that's too much, you can keep alternating between the two. So tilt your pelvis back, peel up into your bridge, elevate onto both toes and then lower the heels. Good, lift and lower. Really firing up those calves now. The calves absorb so much load with impact that it's important that we keep them really strong. Good, lifting and lowering. Lifting and lowering, good work. Again, really slowly coming down onto the mat with those heels. We've got five, four, Three, keep those hips elevated. For two, working into those glutes here as well. And last one, lift and hold for five, four, three, squeeze the bum, two, and one, lower down. Amazing work. Use your hands to help you. Bring yourself into a seated position. And now we're gonna get into all fours to really work the hamstrings. So come to the top of your mat, position your wrists so they're below your shoulders. Shoulders are nice and broad, so we're pushing the mat away from us. The knees are below the hips here. Core is engaged, belly plugged in toward the spine. We're gonna extend the right leg out long, flex the foot, pulling the toes back toward the shin and lift the leg to torso height. Keep both hips square with the mat here. As you drive your right knee in, Extend it out long and pull the heel to the bum, hamstring curl. Good, knee comes in, leg extends, heel to bum, extend, good. In, extend, contract the hamstring, straighten the leg, keeping the foot flexed. Nice work. So we're strengthening the hamstrings here and this exercise is great because we're strengthening as we Flex and as we extend. Nice work, working into the glutes here as well. Keep those abs engaged. We're aiming still for that trunk stability, so we're isolating this work in the lower body. Good, we've got three. And two, drive through that heel, full extension before bending. And last one, bend extend and lower. Nicely done. Now we're gonna switch sides. So stable across those shoulders, stable across the hips. Extend the left leg, flex the foot, drive the knee in, extend it out long, heel to bum. Nice work. Bend, kick out behind you, bend, extend. Bend, out, in, Extend, nice work. So focus on really controlling these movements, keeping them precise, getting as much length through that leg as you drive out through that heel. 
Good, and try to resist um, the tendency to put weight on that supporting side. You wanna stay nice and balanced across those shoulders. Nice work, keep it up. Really contracting those hamstrings as you bend the leg, bringing the heel toward the bum. Nicely done, we've got three, two, good control. Last one, bend, extend, and lower. Bring both knees down to the mat, bring the big toes together, and sink back into child's pose, stretching the spine, breathing in through the nose, and out through the mouth. For three, and two, and one. Okay, from here we're gonna come forward onto our forearms. So we wanna position the elbows so that they're below the shoulders, nice broad shoulders, and the forearms are parallel, fingers are spread. From here, bring your knees back to parallel. Step your right leg back, flexing through the heel, and then step your left leg back. So we wanna create a nice flat line with the body. From here, you can either hold a static plank like so, or you can move into these shifts with me. So shifting forward and backward. Shifting forward an inch and backward. Inhaling and exhaling. Working that core strength as we come forward and shift back. Plug belly in toward the spine. Keep that nice flat line with the body. Gaze is down on the mat, so the neck is in line with the spine. We've got four, three, two. Last one, come forward, bring it back, and lower knees to the floor. Nicely done. Now we're gonna move into a high plank position. So again, wrists are below the shoulders. From here, we're gonna step the right leg back, step the left leg back, creating that flat line. We want those wrists to stay underneath the shoulders. Gaze is down on the mat. From here, we're going into some slow mountain climbers. So we're bringing the right knee in, stepping it back, left knee in, step it back. Alternating sides, keeping the core engaged, belly button lifted up toward the ceiling. Good. So it's really important to strengthen the core, especially if you're a runner. A strong core provides a really stable foundation for the rest of the body. So we wanna be working that trunk strength and stability. Good, breathe through it. We've got five, four, three, two, and one amazing work. Lower the knees down to the mat. Bring yourself into a kneeling position. Lift the shoulders up by the ears and roll them down and back. Nice work. We're gonna continue to work the core. So we're gonna come down onto our forearms. <sighs> Positioning those elbows so they're below the shoulders. Forearms are parallel. Elbows are pulled back behind us. Now from here, we're going to extend the legs out long and really push up through those elbows so we're not rounded through the spine. So we want the chest nice and open. We're gonna go into some leg lifts here. So we're gonna inhale to lift the right leg and exhale to lower. Lift and lower, good. Lift and lower. So we're pointing the toes and flexing those thigh muscles. So we're not locking out the knees, but we're keeping the leg nice and straight. And by flexing those thigh muscles, we are building strength around the knees. So obviously the knees deal with a lot of impact with, when running, so we want them stable, as stable and supported as possible. Now we're working the thighs here, but we're also working those lower abs. So inhale up, and as you exhale, I want you to contract your navel in towards your spine. Don't round through the spine, keep yourself nice and elevated, pushing up through those elbows. And if you want more of a core challenge, lift that right leg so it's hovering above the floor as you lift and lower. We've got five, four, abs in, 
for three, two, flatten that abdominal wall, and last one, lower down, amazing work. Let's switch sides, pointing through those left toes, flexing those muscles that support the knees. Good, lift and lower, lift and lower. As you lower that down, really contract your abdominal wall, controlling that leg on the way up as well as on the way down. Good work. Now, if you wanna step it up, float that right leg up off the mat. It is significantly more challenging on the abs this way. If it's too much, lower it down. Ooh, I'm shaking here. We've got four, three, two, stick with it, and last one, lower down, amazing. Now from here, we're gonna come all the way down onto our backs. Get nice and comfortable on your back. We're gonna go into some leg circles here. So our focus is on core and pelvic stability. So we're gonna bring our right knee in toward the chest, hug it in close, and then straighten that right leg. Let's take a bend, and then let's straighten it again, pulling it gently toward the chest. One more time, bend, and actively stretch that hamstring. Here we're gonna place our hands down on our abdomen. If it's too much for you to have your legs straight, you can have a gentle bend at the knee. From here, we're gonna start circling. We're gonna circle past the bent knee, around and back to that start point. Circle and pause at the starting point. So your aim here is to really contract your belly down away from your hands as you're circling, working on that core stability. And we want to keep those hips very still. So we're just moving that leg around in the hip socket. Imagine you've got a glass of water balanced on your left knee and you're trying not to let it spill. Working that pelvic stability and hold. Let's reverse direction with those circles. So moving in the opposite direction, moving away from the body, down and around. Good. You'll notice we're also working the thighs and the hip flexors here. Good, last one, and bend and lower the leg. Opposite leg comes in, hug it in close, stretch the whole back of the leg, hugging the leg in toward the chest, then bend and repeat, hug it in a little closer. Last one, bring it in as close as you can, lower your hands down onto your abdomen or beside you, bend your knee if you need to, and start those circles. Imagining balancing that glass of water on the bent knee. Good. So as we work into those hip flexors, it's important to remember that weak or tight hip flexors can negatively impact the mechanics of running. So we really want to make sure that we're working this area of the body specifically. Good. We've got three two, and one. Tight, and we're gonna reverse. Tight and weak hip flexors can also cause a lot of pain in certain areas, particularly in the lower back. So we wanna strengthen and stretch those flexors. Good, circling with control, keeping that glass of water balanced on that right knee for three, and two, and one, nice stability. Bend the knee, bring both knees in toward the chest and take a little breather here. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Okay, from here we're gonna lower the feet down to the mat. Use your hands to help you to come into a seated position and now we're going to move on to our sides. So we're going to position the forearm so it's parallel with the top of the mat and we want the elbow below the shoulders. We're gonna stack the knees 
stack the hips and make sure that the torso and the thighs are creating a nice straight line here. So I'm going to place my hand on my hip and we're just going to go into some oblique lifts here. So we're going to lift that lower hip and then lower just hover before lifting it again. So really plugging the navel in toward the spine as we lift and lower. Now if you want to step up the intensity with this one, you can step both legs out into a full side plank. Otherwise, this will do the trick. We're going to lower and lift. So now we're really strengthening those side obliques, those side abs. Good. Working that trunk stability and that trunk strength, lifting and lowering, keeping the chest nice and open. Good. We've got five, four, really cinch in the waistline as you lift that lower hip, two, and one. Stay in the elevated position. Now we're going to extend that top leg and flex the foot. We want that leg in line with the torso. We're gonna lower and lift the leg. Keeping that lower hip elevated. Good. Focusing now on strengthening those inner and outer thighs as we lift and lower with control. Where we're still working the obliques, we've got that lower hip lifted. Good work. We've got five, four, keep lifted, three, two, and one, lower down. Now we're gonna come down all the way onto the mat. You can prop yourself up on your hand or on your outstretched arm. We're gonna straighten out the legs and then we're gonna bring this top leg in front of the body or behind the body, whatever's more comfortable for you, so we can work this inner thigh. So we're going to point through a pointed toe, lengthen through a pointed toe. We're gonna lift the leg and lower, leading up with that inner thigh. Lift and lower, lift and lower. Good, so a lot of people neglect working the inner thighs. It's super important, especially for runners, cyclists, people who play sports, they may have really developed quads, which is great, but if you don't have inner thigh strength as well, it creates imbalances and can negatively affect the alignment of the knees, causing knee pain. Good, one more with a pointed toe. Now we're gonna flex the foot and lift and lower. Really focusing on contracting those inner thighs to get the lift, lengthening out through that heel, keeping the legs straight. Good. We've got five, four, three, lift a bit higher for two, and for one, nice work, lower down. Okay, we're gonna switch sides now. So coming over onto that opposite side, getting into those side plank crunches. So the elbow is below the shoulder, the chest is nice and open, creating that nice line with the body as we elevate that lower hip up. Make any little adjustments you need to. Lower and lift. Lower, just hover and lift. Working those obliques. So weak obliques can lead to hip pain, so it's really important that we're strengthening those side abs. Good, lifting and lowering, lifting and lowering, really challenging yourself by focusing on picking that lower hip right up off the ground and keeping the core engaged as you do so. Nice work. We've got five, four, belly to spine for three, two, nice open chest, and last one. Good, now from here, stretch the top leg out Leg in line with torso, lower and lift with a flexed foot. Good. Working those inner and outer thighs. Working that, those side abs. Good trunk stability as we lift and lower for five, 
four, you can do it, stay elevated, two, and one, nice. Come down onto your side, make that bridge either in front or behind the body, get that top leg out of the way, point through the toe and start lifting and lowering that leg using your inner thigh muscles, using those adductors to lift and lower with control. Good. Nice relaxed neck here. Keep the shoulders down away from the ears. Squeeze those inner thighs. Nice work for three and two and one. Flex and carry on. Nice work. Lift a bit higher each time. Relax those shoulders. That's a reminder to myself as well. Good, abs are engaged for four, three, two, and one. Lower down. Relax yourself down onto the mat and we're gonna finish off with a stretch. So we're gonna cross the right leg over the left, interlace the fingers behind the left thigh, drawing that left knee in toward the chest, stretching out the glutes, stretching into the hips here as well. And try to bring your tailbone down to the floor so your low back is in contact with the mat and it's getting a nice stretch as well. Breathing in through the nose, hugging in a bit closer and out through the mouth for three and two and one. Lower foot to the floor, switch to the crossing of your legs, left over right. Interlace your fingers behind your right thigh, hug it in close stretching those left glutes and just take a couple of deep breaths here breathing in through the nose and as you exhale hug it in a little closer toward the chest stretching the low back here as well tailbone in contact with the mat for three and two and one take your hands behind your thighs roll yourself up to a cross-legged position or kneeling if that's more comfortable Bring your shoulders up by your ears and then roll them down and back for three, melting away tension in the upper body and two and one. I hope you enjoyed that routine. Like I said, try to do it a couple of times a week so that you can consistently build the strength you need for good form and movement. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to moving again with you next time.